effective teamwork begins and ends with communication. This week's lesson is communicating as a management function. The achievement of the objectives of the engineering organization will depend on the performance of the human and non-human elements attached to it. The task of management is to program these elements correctly so that each will respond accordingly to their assigned tasks. Standard programming methods have already been adapted by technologists for most machines and equipment. The programming approach to the human element is different and must be dealt with using methods espoused by behavioral scientists. Employees will perform according to the dictates of their minds. If this is really so, then management must reach them through powerful means of persuasion under the atmosphere conducive to effective communication. The issue now will be, is management using the communication option effectively? The answer must be yes, for if not, trouble may be forthcoming if it has not yet arrived. Morris Wolf defined communication as a process of sharing information through symbols including words and message. Communication may happen between superior and subordinate, between peers, between a manager and a client or customer, between an employee and a government representative, etc. It may be done face-to-face -face or through printed materials or through electronic devices like telephones or computers or through email. In management, communication must be made for a purpose and because it has cost attached to it, it must be used effectively. To discuss communication or communicating as management function, the following topics are included in this lesson. The functions of communication, the communication process, forms of communication, barriers to communication, overcoming these barriers uh, in communication, techniques for communicating in organizations, and management information systems. Functions of communication. Communication may be used to serve any of the following functions. Information function, Information provided through communication may be used for decision-making at various levels of the organization. A construction worker, for instance, may be given instruction on the proper use of certain equipment. This will later provide him with a guide in deciding which equipment to use in particular circumstances. Another concern is the manager who wants to make sure that his decision in promoting an employee to a higher position is correct so through communication. The information provided will minimize, if not eliminate, the risk. Another function of communication is to motivate. Communication is also oftentimes used as a means to motivate employees to commit themselves to the organization's objective. Another function is a control. When properly communicated, reports Policies and plan define roles, clarify duties, authorities, and responsibilities. Effective control is then facilitated. And the last uh, function of communication is the emotive function. This is when feelings are pressed in organization, employees are affected by anxiety, which in turn affects performance. Whatever types of emotions are involved, whether satisfaction, dissatisfaction, happiness, or bitterness, communication provides a means to decrease the internal pressure affecting the individual. Now let's take a look at the communication process. The communication process consists of eight steps. First, develop an idea. Then encode, transmit, receive, decode, accept, use, and provide feedback. Let us discuss each of these uh, steps. 
the most important step in effective communication is developing an idea. It is important that the idea to be conveyed must be useful or of some value. So an example of a useful idea is how to prevent accidents in workplaces. The next step is to encode the idea into words, illustrations, uh, figures, or other symbols suitable for transmission. The method of transmission should be determined in advance so that the idea may be encoded to conform with the specific requirements of the identified method. An example of an encoded message using a fax machine or email as a means of transmission. After encoding the message, you are now ready to transmit through the use of an appropriate uh, communication channel. Among the various channels include uh, the spoken word, body movements, written word, television, telephone, radio, artists, paint, uh, email, uh, etc. Proper transmission is very important. so the message sent will reach and hold the attention of the receiver. So to achieve this, the communication channel must be free of barriers or interference, sometimes referred to as noise. The next step in the communication process is the actual receiving of the message by the intended uh, receiver. The requirement is for the receiver to be ready to receive at the precise moment the message relayed by the sender. The message may be initially received by a machine or by a person. In any case, communication stops when the machine is not turned on or the receiver or the person assigned to receive the message does not listen or pay attention properly. So, initial uh, receipt of the message includes machine, for example, if it's for email, then you use the uh, POP or post office uh, protocol. And if it's a person, usually it's the secretary or the assistant who receives the message. The next step, uh, decoding, means translating the message from the sender into a form that will have meaning to the recipient. If the receiver knows the language and terminology used in the message, successful decoding may be achieved. If the receiver understands the purpose and the background situation of the sender, decoding will greatly uh, improve. In legal practice, for instance, the declarations of dying person have more weight. So decoding includes uh, the language and terminology. So for example, you have the symbols in flowchart. So the receiver must be able to understand the symbols on the flowchart legends in, for example, Gantt chart so that they may be able to understand the, the message. And this will determine successful uh, decoding. So the next step is for the receiver to accept or reject the message. Sometimes acceptance or rejection is partial. So, for example, a, a newly hired employee was sent to a supervisor with a note from his super, superior directing the supervisor to accept the employee into his uh, department or unit and to provide the necessary training and guidance. So, in this example, the supervisor feels that he has not consulted in the hiring process, uh, hiring process so he thinks that his only obligation is to accept the employee in his unit and nothing more. So, although he accepts the message, the acceptance is partial. So the factors that will affect acceptance or rejection of the message uh, are as follows. The accuracy of the message, whether or not the sender has the authority to send the message and or require action, and the behavioral implications of or for the receiver. The next step is for the receiver to use the information. If the message provides information of importance to a relevant activity, then the receiver could store it and retrieve it when required. If the message requires a certain action to be made, then he may do so. Otherwise, he discards it as soon as it is received. 
all of these uh, mentioned options will depend on the receiver's perception of the message. The last step in the communication process is for the receiver to provide feedback to the sender. Depending on the perception of the receiver, however, this important step may not be made. Even if feedback is relayed, it may not reach the original sender of the message. And this may be attributed to the effects of any of the communication barriers.